Christ, and we thank God for our men's choir. Let's put our hands together and thank God for our men's choir. And they said, we're leaning on the Lord. How many this morning are leaning on the Lord? Leaning on him for your help and your strength. Amen. An everlasting Father. A wonderful Savior. A giver of both life, health, and strength. And so we praise God for his marvelous works on this morning. And we praise God for each and every one of you that are with us. Thanking you for your liberality and giving. Thanking you for your prayers and your support. I want to uh, thank God for our Facebook friends. On the West Coast, in Washington, California, Region 12, I want to wish uh, Bishop Clennell Williams a very happy 85th birthday. Amen. We're, we're, we're praying for praying for Sister Audrey Francis, praying for Sister Penn, praying for the family of Sister Ruth Walden. Um, and we'll hear more about her final arrangements as soon as they're given to us. I want to thank God for our East Coast listeners, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Pleasantville, New Jersey. We're praying for Michelle Coleman in Fishkill, New York. And we're praying for you. I ask you to sit attentively as we look at the word of the Lord. I'm going to ask you to turn with us to the 19th chapter of the book of Genesis. My Bible might read a little differently than yours. I'm looking at the New International Version, NIV. And we do give an honor to the Spirit of Christ and those that grace the pulpit with me are elders and deacons and thank God for Lady B and all of you that are here on this morning, amen. Fifteenth chapter, nineteenth chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning the fifteenth verse. And if you have a cell phone or any kind of device, we're going to ask you to silence it for a moment. Cell phone devices. Uh, they are so convenient. But sometimes they uh, give unnecessary interruptions, so we're going to ask you to put it on silence. 15th chapter of the book of Genesis. 19th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning in the 15th verse. 19th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at verse number 15. I ask you to stand to your feet for the reading of the word. Beginning in verse number 15. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand in the hands of his wife and two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives, don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. Everybody look toward heaven right now and shout these words, don't look back. Don't look back. Okay. But Lot said to him, no, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in the sparing of my life. But I can't flee to the mountains, and I can't flee this disaster 
it will overtake me and I'll die. Look here is a town near enough to run to and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small. There my life will be spared. 21. He said to them, very well, I will grant you this request. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town is called Zor. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen all over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. For the Lord out of heavens despised the city. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, bless your word, sanctify it in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Bless us, Lord, to be encouraged, Lord Jesus, to be inspired, to have a mind, Lord Jesus, to serve you and to go on. And all these blessings that we ask, we ask in the wonderful name of Christ Jesus, our soon coming King. Everybody look toward heaven and shout these words again. Don't look back. Now turn to that neighbor, to your right or to your left, and say, keep on pushing. Um, my towel. I want to um, look at the 19th chapter of the book of Genesis and I want to encourage somebody on this morning to take a realistic look at your walk with Christ and uh, take a look at all of the great things that God has done in your life. Not only the things that uh, were pleasant, but look at the things that he's kept you from. Uh, the things that he had not allowed to come in your direction only because he's been merciful and he's been kind. Now, all of you know that this is my uh, favorite season because the NBA playoffs for the East and West Championships have begun. Somebody say Amen. And only one team will be crowned national champion at the end of the series. But what I think that is important for us is that we can learn not only from uh, uh, what's going on in the playoff tournament, but we can also take a lesson in terms of how God has blessed Israel uh, to see uh, lessons that they could learn from uh, some of these situations that's going on right now. One of the things that I always emphasize is that the attitude of every team that qualifies for the tournament, let me talk to the men, is that winning is not everything, but what? It's the only thing that matters. And, and winning is important uh, because to win in life, one of the things that you have to do is have a winning attitude. You've got to have a positive attitude. You've got to learn how to encourage yourself. You've got to learn how to be encouraged even when things don't look like they're going in your direction. And so the thing that we can, the thing that we can learn is that we uh, live life and we live life uh, to the extent that we look at the blessings of God and, and the blessings that come are blessings because God is merciful and God is kind. And so if you don't hear anything else this morning, hear the fact that we serve a merciful and a kind God. And the evidence, the evidence the evidence that he's merciful, the evidence that he's kind, is the fact that you are still here. In spite of what you've gone through, in spite of how your enemies have come against you, 
in spite of all the negativity and the negative things that have happened in your life, you should be able to rejoice in the fact that you are still here. Not only are you still here, but I've got health, I've got strength. And look at somebody and say, I may not look like it, but I'm in my right mind. And so um, every team that plays in a tournament uh, will have a legitimate chance to win. And the winning, the team with the winning attitude will survive until the end. Um, what, what, what makes the tournament to me so exciting is that there will be major upsets. Uh, some teams that are supposed to win will lose. And some teams that will, are supposed to lose will win. And, but it's still quite a matter of attitude that will make the difference in what happens. And so as we explore uh, the word of God and we explore what the Lord is doing for us, it is important that we take lessons from life. And the important lesson that we can learn from sports is that we, we, we shouldn't have to be losers in life simply because we have the wrong attitude. You don't have to lose the life, the game of life. You don't have to be second to anyone. You don't have to walk around with your head hanging down, feeling sorry for yourself, and looking at others prosper right in your backyard. And so what we have to learn to do is understand that uh, life is valuable. And what makes life valuable is when we recognize how important our attitude is about ourselves and our attitude about God. Our attitude about ourselves sometimes is the biggest hindrance that we face. Our attitude about ourselves uh, hinders us from growth and development. It hinders us from being who God has called us to be, and it hinders us from doing the things that God has called us to do. And so when we have the wrong attitude, we can achieve the things that God has placed before us, the things that God has given us, the things that God wants us to pursue. If we don't have the right attitude about ourselves, we will never have the right attitude about God. And when we don't have the right attitude about God, it aborts God's program, it aborts God's plan. It aborts all of the blessings that God has in store for those that trust him, obey him, and take him at his word. And, and, and so the thing that's interesting about sports, and in my analogy, is it, it, the fact that um, what, what, what every team has to learn is they have to learn how to forget the last play. It's called sports psychology, and what every team has to learn is how to forget the last play. And, and, and they have to forget the last play because um, uh, if you take a shot and you miss, you, you can't go through the whole game with your mind on the shot that you missed. If you're uh, playing baseball and you're up to bat, you strike out. You, you can't just uh, relish the fact that you struck out so that the next time you're up to bat, it erodes your confidence. If you're, if, you're, um, if you're in a situation in life and it appears that you've missed the mark, it, it, it appears that you failed, you have to understand that failure is one of the best teachers that we'll ever have. A failure teaches us how to succeed. And you can never succeed in life until you learn how to fail. Uh, sometimes we, we, we teach children when they fall down uh, to get up, wipe the tears, 
and keep on keeping on. And so this morning, all I want to do is encourage somebody to keep on pushing. I, I want to encourage somebody to keep on keeping on in spite of what you've gone through, in spite of how the adversary has fought you, in spite of how the adversary has tried his best to, uh, uh, to eliminate you and make you feel like you are a loser. Uh, I want you to know that what God has given us on this morning is inspiration through his word that we should keep on pushing. Um, uh, one, one sports psychology principle, once again, uh, that's emphasized in every game to every player on every team is called the law of the last play. It's extremely important for every player to forget the last play. It does not matter what the score, forget the last play and strive to make the next play count. In baseball, you strike out, get ready for the next time at bat. In football, if you drop the pass or fumble the ball, get ready for the next pass or the next time you carry the ball. If it's basketball, you miss the shot, get ready to shoot again the next time you're open. When you focus on your mistakes, it takes away from the confidence that you need to make the last play. And, and, and so what we have to see is that what God is saying to us on this morning is, is that we, we, we need to understand how our past and, and the things that we've been subjected to, the things that we've gone through, the things that have seemed to erode our confidence of, are, are not things that deny God's power and presence in your life. No, no matter what you've gone through, I want you to know that your destiny stands sure. No matter what you've gone through, God is on your side. No matter what you're facing, God wants you to fight the battle and know that he is a way maker, he is a keeper, and that he's able to do anything but fail. And so you've got to learn how to forget the last play. You've got to learn how to forget that thing that happened and occurred in your life that seemed to damage your psyche, seemed to damage your confidence, seemed to damage your morale. No matter how many people stood against you, you've got to know that God is on your side. You've, you've got to know that God wants you to keep on pushing up. He wants you to keep on playing. He wants you to run uh, until the clock runs out. And, and so here it is. We have to understand that what God says to us is that if we learn how to focus on our mistakes, it takes away the confidence that you need to make the next play. Uh, 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 you have to understand, simply state it, look at somebody and say, forget the last play. Israel had to learn the same lesson spiritually when they faced the challenges in their pilgrimage through the wilderness. Israel complained that they had no food, no water in the wilderness. They murmured and complained and told God that they would rather be back in Egypt and not go into the promised land. Even after God miraculously delivered them from Pharaoh's army, when they faced difficulty on their journey to the promised land, they lost confidence in God and they wanted to return to Egypt. In other words, they wanted to go back. Israel could not see their future because they were holding on to their past. And I'm speaking to somebody on this morning, you cannot see your future because you're holding on to your past. And I want you to know that, that it's important for us uh, to understand that Israel was ungrateful to God for where he had brought them from. They continued to look back and not look forward to the promises of God. Uh, you've got to learn how to look forward to every promise God has given you in his word. Uh, you've got to learn how to look forward and say that I believe God. Uh, you've got to believe God over your situation. You've got to believe God over your circumstance. Uh, you've got to believe God over all of your haters. Uh, you've got to believe that God is able to do exactly what he said. Uh, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we ask or think of. Uh, He's able to give you help in the time of trouble, and he's able to be your bridge over troubled water. He's able, he's able, he's able. And so every morning when you wake up, you got to look in the mirror and say, keep on pushing because God is able. You've got to encourage yourself when there's nobody to encourage you, when there's nobody to pat you on the back, when there's nobody to tell you how well you've done, when there's nobody to tell you to get up and start all over again. You've got to look in the mirror and encourage yourself. You've
you've got to say, keep on pushing. I'm, I know who I am. I'm, I'm what God declares that I am. I'm, I'm in victory. I'm, I'm walking in prosperity. I'm, I'm walking in the blessings and favor of God. I'm, and no matter what anybody says, I'm, God is on my side. I'm, and because God is for me, I'm, I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm, lift those hands toward heaven and shout, keep on pushing. And so here it is. Uh, uh, you, 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 you can't be afraid of the future. Uh, we would never grow to become all that God intends for us to be in, in our experience uh, uh, and all God intends for us to have. Uh, change is what begins the process of growth. Uh, if you're going to change, you must change the way you think. Uh, change begins growth. Uh, and to grow, you've got to change. Uh, sometimes it's simple adjustments that we've got to make. Uh, sometimes it's just a change of habit. Uh, it's a change of the way we think. Um, it's a change of the way we look at God. It's a change of the way we look at ourselves. Um, and when you have this opportunity for change, um, you've got to nourish it, you've got to develop it, you've got to cultivate it, because change begins with your attitude about God, um, and change begins with your attitude about yourself. One reason that we need to have a winning or positive attitude is because uh, whether it's positive or negative, everything that you do is a learning experience. Nobody told you every day was going to be Sunday. Nobody told you that life was going to be a bowl of cherries. And what we have to understand is that uh, whether it's positive or negative, everything that we do becomes a learning experience. And every learning experience is a time to grow. It's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to see yourself better. One reason that we are afraid of change is because we're afraid to fail. We sometimes don't understand that failure is the first step towards success. Three reasons why we're afraid to fail. Sometimes we're afraid to fail uh, because we're afraid to move forward in life. But we have to understand that the right to fail is as important as the right to succeed. You give yourself all kinds of excuses for failure, and you ought to give yourself all kinds of excuses for why I'm going to win and why I'm going to be victorious. Failure is just as important as success because many times it's the failure that gives you strength. It's the failure that helps you change your perspective it's the failure that helps you to make the adjustment that you need. It's the failures in life that make us understand that we need God. And without God, we can do nothing. We're afraid to fail because of criticism, how others view us. And we sometimes think that how others view us uh, is, is, is more important than how we view ourselves. But remember what the Word of God says. As a man thinketh, so is he. In other words, if you don't have good thoughts about yourself, don't expect anybody else to have good thoughts about you. That that's why that's why it becomes it becomes not only how we think, uh, but it, it's how we move. It's your body language. Uh, sometimes you just got to walk like you've got it going on. Uh, you ain't got two cents in your pocket, uh, but hold your head up and act like you got it going on. Uh, sometimes it's the way you dress. Uh, you've got to sometimes get up in the morning and put on something uh, that makes you feel like you've got it going on. Uh, uh, take off the jeans. Uh, take off the sneakers. Uh, take the head rag from around your head uh, 
comb that hair, look in the mirror, and say, I got it going on. You've got to sometimes, you've got to sometimes change your, 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 your relationship with people up because you're around too many negative people. Up, You're around too many people that don't see life on the upside. Up, They only see life on the downside. Up, And so you've got a group of friends that ain't going nowhere, ain't doing nothing. Up, And birds of a feather flock together. Sometimes you've got to break out up, and say, I'm going to have the wings of an eagle. Sometimes you've got to break out up, and say, I know who I am. Up, sometimes you've got to break out up, and say, I'm going to be everything God has for me. I'm going to be, I'm going to do, I'm going to see what God has for me. Up, and I ain't going to let nothing hold me back. Keep on pushing because God is on your side. Sometimes we're afraid uh, because of the upsets that we face in life. Sometimes uh, life uh, throws us a curveball. And when life uh, doesn't go the way we planned, when, when things don't work out the way that we thought they would, sometimes we, 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 we retreat, we, we throw in the towel, and we feel like we can't go forward. But it's important for us to recognize that, 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 that you can't let your environment uh, shape your attitude. Uh, because uh, it will hurt others and it will destroy any chance you have to win and to reach your destiny. Uh, you, you have to understand that, that it will all not only destroy your destiny, uh, but, but it will destroy you as a person. Uh, and sometimes we allow our environment to... Uh, that the things around us, uh, the things that we touch, taste, see, and smell, uh, 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 to be so, 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 so impactful on our lives uh, uh, that our environment begins to mold us and it begins to make us, uh, and we begin to feel like we are a product of our environment. Uh, but I declare to somebody on this morning, uh, you're not a product of your environment. Uh, you have been created by God. Uh, you're his handiwork. Uh, you were created to praise him. Uh, and I don't care how deep in the gutter God has to go down up. God will reach down and pick you up, turn you around up, put your feet on solid ground up. Your environment can't destroy you up. It can only make you stronger up. Your environment can't produce anything in you up that God doesn't want you to have up. You've got to look up and see God up. You've got to look up and say, I'm better than this. I'm, I'm better than the neighborhood I live in. I'm, I'm better than the things that are surrounding me. I'm, I'm better than this because I am who God says I am. I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm blessed when I go in. I'm, I'm blessed when I come out. I'm, I'm blessed in the city. I'm, I'm blessed in the field. I'm, I'm blessed because I am who God says I am. I'm, I am God's creation. I'm, I am uh, made in his image. I'm, I am a child of the most high king. I'm, I'm a son. I'm a daughter order of the king um, and you've got to wake up someday um, and say I'm a child of the king um, I'm a king's child um, I feel it in my spirit um, I'm a king's child um, I feel it in my mind um, I'm a king's child um, I feel it in my heart um, if you're a child of the king lift your hands up um, and shout hallelujah And so the problem, the problem with Lot's wife was that she was shaped by her environment. She was influenced by what she experienced in Sodom and Gomorrah. She wanted what she was leaving more than where God wanted her to go. She was attached to the past, and she refused to allow God's simple instructions to catapult her into her future. And I always emphasize this. God will give you a simple instruction that will change your life forever. God gave her a simple instruction. Don't look back.
when she looked back, it was an unspoken statement that she did not trust God and that she did not trust God's plan for her life. She looked back because she refused to hear God and she looked back because she refused to let go of her past. She looked back because she could not let go of the things that would destroy her. And so sometimes when we, when we dwell on our past, we don't recognize how it's eroding our future. When we dwell on our past, we don't recognize how it's destroying all of the good things God has in store for us. When we dwell on our past, we don't recognize uh, how much more God has in front of us. Uh, and so we've got to keep a positive attitude, uh, even in difficult times. Uh, always listen for God's instruction. Uh, always know that God will guide you and he will direct you. Uh, always know that God will speak to your heart. Uh, uh, you don't have to go out and find a neon sayer. Uh, you don't have to find a card reader. You don't have to look at the, the zodiac uh, to figure out what God has to say. Uh, if God wants to talk to you, he can talk to you. Uh, uh, he doesn't have to talk to you through anybody else. Uh, he doesn't have to talk to you through a medium. Um, he has to talk, to talk to you through a card reader or a seance. Uh, he doesn't have to talk to you through a zodiac sign. Uh, if God wants to speak to you, uh, he will speak directly to your heart. Uh, it may not come like a whirlwind. Uh, it may not come like a rushing river, uh, uh, but sometimes it's a still, small voice uh, that speaks to your spirit. Uh, it's a still, small voice that speaks to your heart, uh, but when God gives you an instruction, follow his word. Uh, the steps of a good man uh, are ordered by the Lord. Uh, he'll order your steps. Uh, he'll tell you when to go and how to go. Uh, he'll tell you what to stay away from and what to embrace listen to the voice of God up and let him give you direction don't make major decisions in difficult times you've got to learn how to be proactive you have to learn how to plan for what's to come and you've got to do like mama said, look before you leap. But the most important thing is that you've got to be ready for the next play. Can't stand on the court where you missed the shot and freeze. You've got to be ready for the next play. And so remember the wrong decisions are made at the wrong time and good decisions are made at the right time. Timing is everything. But always remember this, that there is an expiration date on your destiny. Don't give too little, too late. Don't try to do things that you should have done would have done, could have done, but for some reason, something persuaded you that it could not be done. Don't, 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 don't give God the remains of the day. After you're spent, used up, no more energy, no more strength, then you come to God. Somebody said, when you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. Flip the script and try Jesus first. Try him before you try anything else. Speak to him and let him speak to you. Let him order your steps and let him direct your path. And make good decisions by following God's instruction. The word of God said that he is a present help in the time of trouble. And so we've got to believe that no matter what season you're in, no matter what you're going through, that this too will pass. Hard times won't last forever. Trouble don't last always. Uh, so don't be afraid to make the next play. In sports, we call it a second win. 
but in spiritual terms, we call it a second chance. Um, and I'm here to let somebody know that God will give you a second chance. Um, uh, God will give you an opportunity to make the next play. Um, God will give you the next opportunity to do it over again. Um, if you take him at his word, if you trust him, um, God will prepare you and help you to make the next play. Um, in other words, you've got to come to Christ um, and you've got to ask him to give you your second win. Um, I, I know I'm tired, I'm weary. Um, I I've been through this over and over and over again. Um, but make up in your mind, I'm not going to look back. Um, make up in your mind, I'm going to keep on pushing. Um, I'm going to push through it. Um, I'm going to get over it. Um, God is on my side. Um, I'm going to allow God to give me the strength that I need. Um, and you've got to come to a conclusion um, uh, that the tragedy in life um, doesn't come because I don't try. The tragedy in life comes um, because I don't believe I have a second chance. Um, but if you read through the scripture, um, God is always giving a second chance. Um, I bless God for my life um, because he gave me a second chance. Um, when I was going down for the last time, um, when there was no hope, um, when he came through taking up the garbage, um, God gave me a second chance. Um, that's why I praise him. Um, that's why I glorify him. Um, that's why I lift my hands and shout hallelujah because I thank God he gave me another chance. Um, I should have been dead and gone. I, I should have been over the hill. I, I should have been wiped out, but God picked me up, uh, turned me around, put my feet on solid ground, and I praise God because he gave me a second chance. Um, I just wonder is there somebody in the building uh, that he gave a second chance? Um, is there somebody in the building uh, he said do it over again? Uh, if there's somebody in the building that I should have been dead and gone, but the Lord was gracious. The Lord was merciful. The Lord was kind. Lift your hands, shout hallelujah. He gave me a second chance. The tragedy, the tragedy in the life of Lot's wife is that she knew what to do, but she chose not to do it. She looked back. She took her eyes off the prize. She refused to keep on pushing. And so, as I conclude, there are consequences when we look back. If you look back, you might lose your joy. If you look back, you might lose your testimony. If you look back, you may lose your anointing. If you look back, you might forfeit the promises of God if you look back, you may go back and lose your desire to keep on pressing, keep on pushing toward the prize of the high calling that God has promised to give you. If you look back, you may lose your inheritance. You may forfeit your destiny. And so we have to ask ourselves a question. And then, then why, why, why do people look back? Why, why would Lot's wife look back to a city that was perverted and had abused its visitors. Uh, why would Lot's look back, wife look back to a city uh, that had no regard for the poor and the needy? Uh, why would Lot's wife look back to a city uh, uh, where God couldn't find ten righteous men? Uh, why would why 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 would you look back? Uh, why would you look back to your life, uh, a, a life of degradation, a life of perversion? Uh, why would you look back to a life of up and down? Uh, in and out. Why would you look back to a life uh, where you don't feel the power and the presence of God? Why would you look back to a life uh, where you don't feel God pushing, where you don't feel God's hand in favor? Why would you look back uh, uh, to a life where you don't have the mercies and the grace of God? Why would you look back uh, to a life where you don't have his anointing and his favor? Each and Why would you look back uh, where a life where you can't call on his name uh, and know that he's a present help in the time of trouble? Why would you look 
back uh, when you know that it was God that brought you. Uh, it was God that kept you. Uh, it was God that saved you. Uh, why would you look back uh, when you know if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Uh, why would you look back uh, when you know God has been better to you uh, than you've been to yourself? Uh, why would you look back uh, when you know he's been clapping in your hands uh, and dancing in your feet? Why would you look back to a God that said, I love you with an everlasting love? I love you. I'll be a mother when you need a mother. I'll be a father when you need a father. I'm closer than a brother. Why would you look back when God says, I'm able to keep you in perfect peace. I'll keep those that keep my mind and mind stayed. Why would you look back when God says and you walk through the valley of death, I'll be your shepherd and you shall not want. Why would you look back back up uh, when God said I'll be your move while I give you water from a rock up uh, and I'll give you manna from heaven. Why would you look back up uh, when God's been so good to you? Uh, why would you look back up uh, when you know that it was God all the time? Uh, it was God pushing up. Uh, it was God pulling up. Uh, as a matter of fact stand on your feet right now. Uh, take somebody by the hand up uh, and say keep on pushing up. Uh, let's keep on pushing up. Uh, let's keep on going up. Uh, let's keep on moving up. Uh, I don't want to look back. I can't look back. I refuse to look back. He's been too good to me. Pull back by the hand and say, keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. And don't look back. I want you to do this, and I'll finish. I want you that are standing to your feet to give God 60 seconds of your best praise. And as you praise him, as you praise him, as you praise him, tell every demon in hell, tell every hater, tell your circumstance and your situation, as you praise God, I want you to shout to heaven, I won't look back. Come on, give him some praise and shout, I won't look back. Come too far from where I started from. But you're from a mighty long way. Look at you, look at, look at yourself. Uh, you look better than you ever did. More blessed than you've ever been. Food on the table. Roof over your head. Look at somebody and say, I got money in my pocket. I'm blessed. And I'm not going to make excuses. I'm blessed because the Lord is on my side. I'm blessed because I have the favor of God. I'm blessed because I'm a child of God. I know where my blessings come from. And so for all my, for all my analysts, all my analysts, Barkley and the other guys, just remember, forget the last play. Keep on pushing. Don't look back. When you get the ball, take another shot. If you miss it, take another shot. If you miss it, take another shot. But don't look back. Because God, every head is bowed. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, bless your word, sanctify it in our hearts. Give us that inspiration to keep on pushing. We're closer than we've ever been before. I can see clearly now. See the horizon. See your blessing. See your favor. And I want to walk in your anointing, Lord Jesus. I want to walk as a child that you can use. A child, Lord Jesus, that's not ashamed of your blessing. A child that's not ashamed 
She said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? So bless your people right now, Lord Jesus. Touch them in a very special way. In a special way. In a special way. In a special way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just for a moment, bow your heads and let's think on the goodness of the Lord. We're going to leave all your troubles behind. We're going to push and don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back now. Don't look back. Thank you, Jesus. You just put your hand in mine. We're going to leave all our troubles behind. We're going to walk and don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Another verse says, if it's love that you're running from. If it's love that you're running from. There's no hiding place. There's no hiding place. Can't run. Can't run. Put your hand in God's hand. And he'll take you to that sacred place. So if you just put your hand in mine. So if you just put your hand in mine. We're going to leave all our troubles behind. going to push it. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Everybody say don't look back. Somebody here that's not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, somebody not filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. His Spirit is here this morning. He'll fill you. He'll anoint you. He'll order your steps. Somebody sick of body will pray with you. That God's anointing will break every yoke, every fetter. That God will heal your body. Give you hope. So as we just join us with a chorus and we'll be finished. Say, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. And don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. So if you just. every heart is lifted toward heaven. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Sanctified in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Give us a desire to keep on pushing, keep on moving forward, Lord Jesus. And take the spirit, Lord Jesus, of negativity out of our lives. Help us not to look back, Lord Jesus, because you brought us from a mighty long way. We magnify you, we praise you, we exalt you, and we bless your word, we bless your name. We honor, Lord Jesus, your spirit. And as we leave this place, we don't leave your presence. Everybody lift their hands toward heaven and shout these words. Don't look back.